using cast iron, we know that Teflon will, will kill you. Uh, and <laughs> I don't know about the different nonstick and the, the chemicals that are on those so that your food doesn't stick at all. But I also know as an athlete that too much iron that we can oxidize in our body. When, when athletes come to me and say, oh, well, I don't know, I'm not going to have, you know, high iron or plant-based diet or, you know, the first thing I say is go have your iron checked. First of all, don't just assume that you had low iron because I had higher iron when I went plant-based than when I was meat-based. So it's, 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 it's certainly not a, an always, but uh, it's never smart to just start taking iron if you don't, if you haven't gone to get your iron done and know that you are low. So same with the skillet, right? I mean, it's iron and, and how long do they last? Are they good for you? Can that iron from your skillet oxidize in our bodies? From what I've understood, and I have not done a deep dive, I don't know if you know too much about this, but you don't really take in that much yeah, iron from yeah. cast iron. That leaches out. Yeah. Because yeah. the iron, I mean, it takes a lot of energy if we go to liberate the iron molecules from the skillet, right? Because that's, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a metal, right? And so, um, it's, it's not, not a good source of iron. It's not a great, it's not, it's not a, it's not a concern if you've got high iron and, uh, or if you're worried about high iron and really the only people that need to worry about high iron are people that have a genetic disorder called hemochromatosis. It's fairly common though. Right. Uh, it's a disorder of, of, uh, of iron metabolism and it causes the iron to store in the liver, uh, yeah. which can, can cause, uh, you know, inflammation and problems down the road. Um, but, uh, most people now that being said, we do know that the overconsumption of heme iron, which is the, so iron comes in two forms dietary wise, there's yeah. heme iron and non-heme iron. So yeah. heme iron is iron bound hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is the protein in our blood that carries oxygen. So basically when we eat a piece of meat, we're eating some of that dead animal's uh, blood, right? With it, which is really disgusting when you realize that, right? But that's where the heme iron uh, comes from. Well, heme iron is highly, highly, highly pro-oxidant, highly inflammatory. Um, it's probably one of the reasons that red meat has such a high association with colon cancer uh, because of the mm -hmm. excess heme iron and we'll absorb as much heme iron as we take. Now, non-heme iron, which is what, what's found in plants, is harder for our bodies to absorb, which is why it can be kind of a pseudo a nutrient of pseudo concern on a plant-based diet. It doesn't need to be, um, um, but um, it, it is harder for our bodies to absorb. However, if you co-ingest a source of vitamin C with a, with an iron, with a, uh, source of plant-based iron like beans and legumes and spinach things like that you'll absorb as much if not more and but it's also self-regulating so when your iron stores are replete you'll stop absorbing you can't so you won't over absorb the non-heme iron like you can with the ah. heme iron. oh smart body okay yeah no exactly yeah. exactly yeah. right <laughs> so, so so again people that i mean i've seen it in junk food vegans uh, iron deficiency mm -hmm. but um if you're eating a well-balanced whole food plant-based diet you know we, where you're using citrus and bell peppers and all that stuff. You're going to eat a lot of fruit. And, you know, it's just not something you have to worry about. Right. So put lemon in your hummus. Right. That's there it. you go. It's a perfect example. Perfect. Right? Which is my favorite hummus. Thank you for 